the legendary history of Dennis. <laughs> I came across this video late last night, started watching it, actually seemed really well made. And so I stopped, figured we'd watch the whole thing today. I figured this could be fun because when I look at the timestamps, it seems like this will go over some things that I never really talked about before. And maybe I will today. Maybe. Let's watch. When talking about Roblox YouTubers, Dennis is one of the first names that come to mind. Currently boasting over 9 million subscribers, he has managed to appeal to a wide audience. However, chances are high that you've wondered about Dennis's journey to this point. Dennis is a Roblox YouTuber that primarily uploads Roblox gameplay videos. Pretty original content. Whoa, did you hear that guys? Pretty original content. He is also one of the most liked content creators in the Roblox community. Now that context has been established, let's get into Dennis's history. Dennis's YouTube journey can be traced back to December 18th, oh 2010. Oh my god! I, I guess they use the way back machine here. This is what YouTube used to look like. And instead of a banner, you change the background of your channel. Oh my God. Look there, the one to fear. That's Flebzy, Sam Gladiator. I've talked about them before. Oh my God. It wouldn't be until sometime in 2011 that the first video on Congo Boom would be uploaded, which was a video titled, Who Says You Can't Quick Scope in Black Ops? Moving past that, the Congo Boom channel mainly consisted of regular Minecraft gameplays, map showcases, mod reviews, and much more. Anyway, the Congo Boom channel would continue performing well in 2013 and even 2014, gaining over 8,000 subscribers during that time period. It was also around this time that Dennis met fellow Roblox YouTuber Coral. The two of them made videos together and became great friends. In March of 2016, Dennis announced that the Congo Boom channel would be discontinued and new videos would be posted on the Sub Zero Extabyte channel. Oh my god. Ah! <laughs> that banner! Okay, for those of you who don't know, before the pals, Sub and Sketch actually both made Minecraft animations on Sub Zero Extabyte. That's what the channel was called. We originally started with Sub Zero. We were just like, we'll be Sub Zero. We're like just gonna start posting to this channel that already exists, already has subscribers. Look at that. That's. <laughs> That's Coral, what? That's Alex Sub. Why do I look like that? <laughs> this is before Sketch was in the picture. Even though he originally was actually making videos on this channel with Sub, but then he went off and started doing his own thing. <laughs> and then he comes, okay, this is so weird. Look at that, man, it's so weird. New channel contained Minecraft roleplays that featured Dennis, Coral, and two new members, Sub and Alex. During this month, Dennis also made a channel for content not related to the pals. It was kind of the other way around, by the way. It was Sub and Alex wanted to start a channel and they reached out to me and Coral. They found us through Flebzy. Flebzy was still making videos with me and Coral on the Congo Boom channel. This channel went by the name of Dennis, Roblox, and more. Oh my However, god. However, over half of the initial uploads on this channel were Minecraft roleplays. What's insane is that Dennis's channel surpassed 100,000 subscribers only a few months after creating it. This quick growth was likely due to Dennis being a part of the pals which already had an established fan base. At the time of the Dennis, Roblox, and more channel's creation, the Sub-Zero Extabyte channel had accumulated hundreds of thousands of subscribers. Some of this success likely rubbed off on Dennis's channel, hence the quick and big growth it experienced. Kind of. Slight correction there. Sub's channel already had like 300,000 subscribers when we started posting Minecraft videos to it. 2017 wasn't too different, with Dennis continuing to upload Roblox videos pretty consistently. His channel, which was now renamed to simply Dennis, managed to reach both 2 million and 3 million subscribers in 2017 alone. Everything was going well for Dennis. That was until September of 2017. Earn free Robux instantly at oh. Robux.net. Oh my god. Here I we go, couldn't guys. be more excited about today's video. Here, Dennis talked about a new app called Robux and explained how to use it. 
What's important to note is that Grobux promised to give users free Robux through answering surveys and downloading other apps onto your device. Many Roblox users criticized Dennis for promoting a scam to his young and impressionable audience. So this is something I've literally never talked about. Keyword there, scam. That word was getting tossed around a lot at the time wasn't a scam it did work it got to the point where alex neutron the creator of meep city called dennis out on twitter and told him to be aware of roblox's terms of service the whole Grobux thing was really blown out of proportion. It broke a Roblox Terms of Service, which basically doesn't allow you to redistribute Robux through groups. And what happened with this is I was approached with a business partner that said that this was fine. It's on me for not going and reading through the terms. But to be honest, at the time, I didn't really know what I was getting myself into. To me, it seemed like a thing at the time that fans would really want. The way it worked is you would download mobile apps and then in exchange you would get robux and it did work it actually did but at the time i had never dealt with any sort of like drama before i didn't really know how to react to it publicly so literally same day when we released it as soon as i saw that it actually broke roblox's terms we took it down immediately and then i just never really talked about it again and i wish looking back i would have just addressed it and actually talked about it because most of the stuff people were saying about it was just simply not true but i didn't really know what to do so i just kind of shut down and didn't do anything he managed to continue posting new content during 2018 and even branched out to trying other games such as minecraft and granny this proved to be pretty successful, with the said content gaining millions of views. Dennis began 2018 with around 3.9 million subscribers and ended the year with over 6.5 million subscribers, an increase of over 70%. However, something big happened in October of 2018. During this month, Dennis's mobile game, Cats and Cosplay, released on the iOS and Google Play Store. <laughs> I definitely thought that was going to be some drama. <laughs> Something big happened. With the app getting tens of thousands of downloads within several days. In fact, the first video on this YouTube channel is a playthrough of level 1 of Whoa, Cats and Cosplay. No Overall, way. 2018 was a great year for Dennis and his channel. Oh, that's amazing. Moving into 2019, Dennis took a short break to recover from a cough that he was having. Everything went back to normal starting on January 8th. Nothing significant happened for the rest of January 2019. February came around the corner and all was going well for Dennis and his channel. However, something semi-related to him happened in the second half of the month. If you were around on Roblox during this time, you most likely know what I'm gonna be talking about. What? What? For a basic summary, Dennis's friend Coral argued oh. with a fan on Twitter over them <laughs> supporting Coral and the other members. I was like, what's he talking about? I have no idea. During the exchange, the fan said that they spent $100 to have the pals written on their school jersey. Coral's response to this was simply cringe. How did this affect Dennis? He and the other members of the pals decided to kick Coral out of the group due to his actions. Dennis also made a video that was uploaded to the pals channel talking about the situation and what they would do going forward. As can be seen, the entire Coral situation and events that resulted from it hurt Dennis emotionally. This is understandable as Coral was one of Dennis's best friends and it must have been painful having to take action against him. Watch the video I made on a topic to learn more about what went down. Okay, I think I saw this one and it actually went through it like very in depth. I'll, I'll link this video in the description, by the way. Like I encourage you to watch this whole thing through. I feel like I've talked about the whole pals and coral situation like a handful of times now. I don't really know what else more there is to be said. I guess if I'm being honest, I can't help but every now and then imagine what life would be like if this situation didn't happen. Would the pals still be making videos? Probably not, if I'm being honest. It's so easy to blame Coral for, like, the fall of the pals, but it definitely happened at a time where things were already pretty rocky anyways. I mean, a lot of it did have to do with Coral. 
but like, I think what happened with the pals also kind of reflects what, how I was feeling with my channel and my own content at the time as well. Like, I think it turned into a thing that originally started as we're just like having fun as friends, making videos. Once it became way bigger than any of us really ever expected it to, it was definitely much more of like a, this like obligation we had to keep up what we had started. Even even if we didn't necessarily feel like we wanted to do it. It's kind of like the whole idea of just because you're really good friends with someone doesn't necessarily mean that you should like live with them or work with them. I think that's something that YouTubers are so quick to do. They have their online friends and they're just like, why wouldn't we move in together? You see it all the time, YouTubers that record videos together, a lot of the time they eventually move in together as well. I've learned the hard way multiple times that just because you're close with someone doesn't necessarily mean you make good roommates or you make good um, like partners in, in your work. So I can't help but wonder if Brayden and I would have been friends if we didn't go down the same career path together. That being said, that is also how we met. We literally met through both of us making videos. It's tough. I miss <laughs> the good parts of him. <laughs> we were best friends for many, many years. So it's easy to look back at all of these like really fun times we had together. But then as soon as I remember all of the terrible times we had together, then it you know so yeah it sucks it's it's easy for everyone to look at coral and immediately laugh and brush it off and be like oh remember that remember that like twitter situation but i mean to me like my life did pretty significantly change once he left so and look at me now <laughs> in late june of 2019 dennis started a new channel called dennis minecraft as implied wow. by the name, the primary focus of this We're channel is Minecraft-related content. Why is this channel being mentioned? Around this time, Dennis started Good a question. series called Minecraft Hero Quest. The episodes on this series were uploaded to the Dennis Minecraft channel. Oh my God. It was a big deal as Minecraft Hero Quest was released around a month after the Village and Pillage update was released for Minecraft. Dennis was one of the many creators that experienced renewed popularity during the spring of 2020. After a few months, Dennis's channel started to decline in monthly views and subscribers. This was expected due to life going back to normal around the world in late 2020. As for his content throughout the year, it was pretty similar to what he normally uploads. One major thing that happened was the release of Dennis's TV show, Dennis and Me. It was stated that the show had been in production for several years, which meant the idea had existed for a while. So like you just said, episode one was released end of 2020. I think we started working on the show in 2018. I'm pretty sure. It was a crazy, um, I, I, I just want to see what he says about the show. And then to we'll, me was released we'll between there. November and early December of 2020 to great success. Overall reception towards the series was very positive and the official Dennis and Me account gained hundreds of thousands of subscribers within a few months. If you want to watch episodes of the series, make sure to go to the Dennis and Me YouTube channel. Oh, uh, yay, anyway, yes. I guess I don't talk that much about the show anymore. If you didn't know, I have a cartoon show and uh, all the episodes are free on YouTube. You can go watch, there's a link in the description. But yeah, we started in 2018, right around the peak of Sir Meowzalot's popularity. It was originally supposed to be just a Sir Meowzalot show, like it didn't even have me in it. But then as we kept working on it, we kind of realized that the duo was probably more what people wanted. If you kind of look at the timeline, we start in 2018 and I'm working on the show all the time like a uh, making a cartoon show is uh, An insane amount of work. Obviously, there was like a whole team behind it It was incredibly difficult keeping up with I was doing two videos a day on my channel two videos a day on the pals channel I was working on the cartoon show every single day and now if you go through a couple of years of that It's kind of no wonder I burned out and I was really really nervous about that I was really nervous that we worked so hard on season one as we were finally approaching the release i was so tired and so drained and like every single day was so so difficult to like record and get videos out there where i like 
was looking excited and happy. Like I was just so overwhelmed. And I really feel like there was a period of time where I was just clinging on, hoping that I can continue to upload so that I don't like ruin the release. I really didn't want to like take a break from YouTube and then the show comes out like a couple months later, like that would have just felt like such a waste. So for so long, I, I feel like I just had this, this need to keep going so that the show could thrive. And uh, let's just say it's no coincidence that the show was released and then I pretty quickly took a break shortly after. On New Year's Eve 2020, Dennis posted the following messages on his Twitter account. I can't keep putting a face on anymore. <laughs> I'm not okay and ha- <laughs> What is the voice? I can't keep putting a face on anymore. I've stopped myself from ever saying anything because I felt as soon as I do it I'd make it real. <laughs> but it's been real for years and I'm so tired of bottling it up. The oh last thing I wanna be is a mopey YouTuber complaining about their life. I understand how lucky I am which is why I've tried so hard to smile and keep the energy up. But all I want right now is a break. So yeah, like I said, this was very shortly after the, the show came out. So then one month later, I posted this tweet saying that I just need a break. Basically, Dennis was not in the best place mentally and decided to take a break from YouTube. A majority of the Roblox community were very supportive of Dennis's decision and were fine with him not uploading for a while. It Man, wouldn't be until March months. 18th, 2021, oh, when we would hear from Dennis again. On this day, he uploaded a video titled, Where Have I Been? Here, he explained that he made a lot of progress mentally and physically while away from YouTube. Along with this, he wanted to stop making Roblox content and- Buddy, the mustache needs some grooming. The goatee has to go. For all you trying to grow the most perfect mustache out there, it's really quite simple. You see, you want to trim around the lip and not leave too much on the sides here, right? Because then you get this weird kind of bushy, uh, kind of a uh, sort of gross look. Or you could look like this. The Where Have I Been video received lots of community support following its release. Adding on to this, a video titled Goodbye Roblox was uploaded to Dennis's channel three days later. It was basically a montage of moments from Dennis's time making Roblox content. The video received a lot of positive reception from the Roblox community, with many feeling happy about how far Dennis had come. As almost anyone would say, that aged like milk. <laughs> Dennis returned to making Roblox content in September of 2021. Oh, now we have reached the present day. It's September 2022 and Dennis's channel has accumulated over 9 million subscribers. Dennis held the title of biggest Roblox YouTuber until early 2021, when that title was given to Roblox YouTuber Flamingo. Regardless, his channel is in a pretty good state right now, earning between 300,000 and 1 million views per day. His influence within the Roblox community is already very prevalent and will continue to be like this for many years to come. <gasps> really? Wow, that was so good! There you have it, guys. The entire history of Dennis Daly. Surprisingly, extremely accurate. There were really only a couple of things I felt the need to tack on to. If you're interested in more in-depth detail, I'll link this video in the description. Watching this, I can't help but reflect on everything that has happened leading up to the point we're at now. And I am so happy to say that we're, uh... We're back and doing really incredible for all of you who've been either sticking around for years and years or you just joined recently. I hope you're liking what's coming out these days. I think we're at a wildly different point than at least I ever imagined. I'm, I'm so happy with where the channel's at. So let's keep it going, guys. Yeah, you know. Ah.